Hello, everyone. Welcome to our next presentation. We are super excited to have Harry Boxer with us to demonstrate live trading for you all today. Harry is a 50-year veteran trader who was a two-time winner of the Worldwide Internet Stock Market Trading Contest, the Technical Analysis Challenge. Now, I mentioned this earlier, but whether you're watching on a mobile device or a desktop computer, go ahead and put your video in full screen mode. Uh, you'll have the best view of these charts. And also, we'll be answering questions throughout the presentation, so please feel free to type them in the chat box, and we'll answer them as we go along. So with that, Harry, we are so looking forward to learning your strategy today and gaining some insight on great day trading picks. The floor is yours. Great. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Um, I wanted to give you, before we start, a quick flavor of what we do at thepicktrader.com. But first of all, there, there uh, in front of you is a screen of my login page. And when you log in, you'll see um, the following, a trading room with dozens and dozens and dozens of traders, hundreds of traders, actually, uh, posting their ideas, posting questions, and uh, coming up with phenomenal ideas. The best part about my room it's been, it's been open for 20 years, and some, some people have been with me that long, but for the most part, um, people are willing to not only mentor, um, they're very friendly, they're very uh, contributory and very, uh, and very unselfish, so to speak, so it's a great place to be. Uh, that's uh, something I think you guys will enjoy, and we're offering a two-week free trial, so just sign up and come on in. You'll probably make enough money to pay for the first year or two, so that's the trading room itself. When you get into my room, what you'll see is my desk. This is my desk. When typically, I have a market miner on the left side where I follow a, a bunch of stocks closely that I you know, either have positions in or, or won't like trading, um, or that are swing trades, because we do issue a lot of swing trades as well. Um, but some of them now are just smoking. Um, and then on top, we have five-minute charts of the NASDAQ 100 and S&P 500 side by side. I also have the 60-minute charts, the hourly charts for both same in, in the indices to give us a flavor, not only what's going on intraday, you can see the uh, NASDAQ 100 had exploded up to double top and they came back down, it's wedging now, and while the S&P also double topped and pulled back um, and it's kind of set, setting up a day and a half long consolidation. Um, but if you look at the hourly chart, you'll see the monster move off the lows from 14.4 on the NASDAQ 100 to 15, over 15.4, that's a thousand points in just a few days on the NASDAQ 100. The S&P went from, oh, well, let's call it uh, 4275 to 4535, uh, a nice 260-point rally there. So very substantial rally. And of course, we're long in the tooth, but I want to point out from an LA wave standpoint, this is basically a one, two, three. And here it's also base one, two, three. So, and the th third wave is typically the longest. So I wouldn't be surprised to see consolidation or even pullback in here. But to give you a flair for what I'm feeling for the market, the market is very strong. The shorts are not being let off the hook. They continue to be squeezed. And as a result, um, what, what you're getting is um, the market having a tough time going down, actually. But for, for me, I'm seeing um, maybe a little deterioration in the underlying technicals because today the advanced declines are negative by 600 issues in New York and by about 300 issues in NASDAQ. Uh, the up-down up -down volume in NASDAQ is five to three positive, but New York is five to three negative. So it's a kind of divergence. We'll just have to see where the market takes us. Uh, what we do at the techtrader.com is I come in every morning and I pick out a focus list of stocks that I think have reason to be moving technically. Um, fundamentally, I'm interested only in what's triggering the move to see how, much, how powerful it might be. Um, but for the most part, I follow intraday one minute charts and I do it from a technical standpoint. In front of you, you'll see a stock that we came out this morning called uh, Digital World Acquisition. Um, it popped dramatically right at the opening, a big volume, and then pulled back. And basically, when it popped up a little bit and formed a flag, I told all my people, if the flag breaks, we go long. And I was trading at about 14 at the time, 14 and a half. Uh, within about a half an hour, it ran up to almost 20. And then formed a coil at a very tight one at the apex here on a low volume ebb. And then it popped and was halted. Then it popped again. Even though it was halted here on the downside, it held support. And in, in internal trend line. So at this point, what I'm looking at in this stock is obviously, can it be one of those stocks that goes bonkers and trades at 40 or 50? Well, it certainly had a good start on that, didn't it? Going from 10 to 26. So when a stock does this, you never know. But what I would tell all my people is this pullback low and this pullback low, that's your support zone between 21 and 21, 90, 22. Under 21 would be a mandatory stop for me. Um, but above the high, above 20, uh, 680 or thereabout where the high was, 
the stock has a so solid chance of moving into the 29, 30 zone and, and beyond. Um, that's the kind of stuff we look at every day at the techtrader.com. I'm going to show you some more examples. And by the way, I want to encourage everybody to um, ask questions. So Rena, uh, I don't have the questions in front of me. If you see any, feel free to jump in and uh, ask, uh, you know, tell me what the question is. Yeah, sure. I'll actually jump in now. You're, you have your first question. <laughs> yeah, you have a question now? I do. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Ronald's asking, what are your top three favorite technical price patterns to play? Okay, well, uh, I tell everybody, if you read my book, I wrote a book called Profitable Day in Swing Trading. And, and it's oh, written in layman's terms. The one thing, the one common um, positive I get about that book is that it's written in layman's terms. So you can understand it no matter how much of a newbie you might be. Um, and it's educational. Um, I've, you know, I've been doing this for 60 years. I'm going to be 75 in December. I've been doing it since I'm a kid. Um, I've been studying it since I'm a kid. I've been trading actively for over 50 years. Um, you know, it's, I think I got it right this, and I finally got it right. I mean, it, so um, the bottom line is when stocks are in uptrends, that's fine. But in the morning, what I look for every morning is this pop, pull back, low volume ebb. Low volume ebb means that when a stock comes down, it gets very quiet, small little bars like it did there, and starts to move back up. If the volume increases like it did there, that would be about where the buy was. Technically, it was about 13 and a half. Um, then it flagged. So what I'm looking for is breakout pullback if the pullback holds above the breakout point and then surges and then sets up some sort of wedge, coil, flag, et cetera. That's where I want to be long. And this one little bar right here, see the spike? The move from 14 three quarters to 1582 on 2.8 million shares and then a four minute flag. That was a great setup. From 1545 within a half hour, it was almost 20. Okay, that the trade right there was enough for the day, right? Then it coiled, got very quiet, and it got to what I coined the low volume ebb. See how low the volume was here? How tight and little bar we had here? Usually that occurs right before move. And at that point, 1840.50, that's your breakout spike. Could have bought it 18 three quarters, 19. It was halted a couple of minutes later and then exploded about $9, $8, $9 in about half hour, 40 minutes. So there were two really good trades in the stock today here on the breakout and here on the breakout. And for, quite frankly, I look at this as a one, two, three, four, five, wave one, this is wave two, and this is a one, two of wave three. And we may see a move to as high as 28, nine zone uh, that ends this wave, and then maybe a later consolidation. And who knows where this goes? And you know, these things have a habit when they run to explode, squeeze the shorts and continue to spike. But what I would tell everybody is this pullback low and reversal bar is Paramount. I stop under 22. I'm gone. As I'm speaking, you can see the bar. This is a live trade. Just popped out as a little flag. Vine picked up too. If there's a follow through, and if it takes out 2680, you're going to see a runner that could explode in an upward trajectory blow off. Now, again, it could be a one, two, three, and maybe four takes some time. Maybe we spend another half hour, an hour, but eventually over 30. 32, 33, something like that could very well happen. If it doesn't happen during a session, it might happen after hours. But the kinds of patterns I look for to break them out is anything that popped big time and then comes down, I want to see it reverse again. That reversal with volume right there at the opening is what triggered my interest. Breaking out across the double top, which occurred about 12.45, uh, 12.40, zone. So in that zone right there, the breakout occurred right there, the retest, a secondary breakout and flag, and that's a perfect bull flag. And then the run up. So again, and here's the pop right now, as we speak, 25.85, it's up about $16 on the day, believe it or not. It's trading a mere 242 million shares, and we've only been up in three hours. Insanity, right? But there we go. I understand this has something to do with Donald Trump, but whatever. Uh, some more examples of the kind of stocks we put out there. Now, Biotricity this morning, uh, formed a um, well, less, you know, you can see the move it had and then the pullback. I told everybody if we get volume over 345, it's a, it's a probable trade. It occurred right there. And then from 350 or so, it spiked to 390, 40 cents. And I mean in minutes. And now it's pulling back in a, what I consider an orderly falling wedge. So basically, this is a one, two. And on a longer term time frame, if you look at five minutes, you can see it's had a one, two, three, four. So when you pull back and do this properly. And by the way, I spend 
just so you guys know that I have, aren't familiar with me, when I, I come in in the morning before 4 a.m. in Los Angeles, where I live, um, and I'm on the air for two, and about an hour, hour and 15 minutes going over all the charts, all, this, all the news of relevant stocks and, and the patterns and, and seeing which ones look the strongest, have the biggest price volume surges. I want, I want volume, not just price. I want to make sure that volume is as strong as you can possibly get um, in terms of relative volume. Um, this, this program, TC2000, which I highly recommend, gives you something called volume buzz right there. You can see that DWAC has 39,000% more volume than average for this time of the day. So that gives me um, some real strength. Take a look at this stock right now at the high for the day and about to explode. How she goes, 26.79 double top, or is it gonna blow through? I think it's going right to 29 right here. 27 last the new high, 27.08. 22, 30, 50, it's flying, 70, 71. Do I hear 28, going once, going twice? Anyway, so th there's a, a, a one of our day trades and many of my traders are still in this because there was no real reason to sell it. No stops were taken out. And that's the beauty. How do you, one of the number one question I get from all my traders, well, how do I stay in a stock? I keep selling it too early. And that's because you're anxious when you see a profit, you don't want to give it back. There's nothing wrong with peeling back a little here a little there, maybe a third and a third. You're still holding a third and watching the stock go. So you still got some skin in the game. Um, raising your stops is another. When you see a stock pull back there and coil, that's my stop. If it doesn't violate it, there's a pullback. There's your next stop. Another new high at 27.97. Now this morning I gave him targets at 21.2 and 20, 27.8. We've already reached both targets. I just told them earlier that my, my, final, my next target would be up around 32.3. So when you've got a stock of momentum, you want to stay with it and not give it away because the, the, what the average person does, because it's human emotions and psychology, is they sell their winners and they keep their losers and they end up with a pile of nothing. So to answer your question about patterns, my favorite patterns are breakouts, pullbacks, and then buy them on the upside, including a flag like that. Look at this flag here at 14.30. It's now double that. 27.97. So basically in two hours, 100%. So, and, you went, and I, this isn't just one idea. I mean, I've had a lot today. Uh, let's take a look at, I told you about BT, and uh, that was one we had earlier. And um, a couple of other ideas were CMMB, which popped and then faded, but there was a little trade in there. I'm still waiting for VALN. I think this stock, take a look at this chart. Pretty wild and crazy. Fill the gap so it may back off. But if it goes, this could be 48.50, 52.3. That's my targets on VALN. I would wait for the breakout. As you can see, if the angle of ascent holds true. We're looking at $50. You know, in a tough day like this, Sometimes the, tra the trades don't work uh, as well, but that's why I put out for every trade that you get from me, every buy alert has a support, resistance. Uh, it tells me, I tell you where the targets are, target one and target two, and where the stops are. In trading in my room, it's mandatory. You trade with a stop. You trade with volatile um, momentum stocks that can switch and reverse on you at any moment. If you take a look at HX, for example, I warned all my people last night. I said, this stock is up eight out of nine days or 10 out of 11 days. Take a look at this. It just exploded. I said, there's a possibility we can see mid twenties when it was trading at, at 10 because of the momentum on it and because of the prior resistance in that zone. My original target was down there at 12. When it went through 12, like butter, uh, and it went up for like 10 out of 12 days and spiked and blew, blew off with volume. Look at the volume yesterday, 61 million shares on a stock that never trades any kind of volume. And it's also Chinese. So I warn everybody, um, because the volatility in some of these Chinese stocks is insanity. So um, two things occurred. A multiple wave move up. Pre-market, the stock made a new high, kind of double top right here, and then faded. And I told everybody, your stop is right there. Do not let this go under 21. Look what happened under 21. 13. 
eight dollars in two or three hours. You cannot allow that to happen. You cannot trade anything in a market without a stop. Take a look at this hard down and then a bear wedge and hard down and then a bear flag. And guess what? Even though it looks like it's five waves down, one, two, three, four, five, um, I'm not so sure. Now the fifth wave consolidation is always less reliable. So this may turn. But what I would wait for on a stock like that, if, it, if you're gonna trade it, wait for at least a key resistance area to be taken out. So over 15, you might see 17 and a half or you might see 20 again. But the, the key is don't buy something because it's cheap and don't buy something because, you know, it, it, you know the, for example, this morning was 25 and now it's 13 and you think, wow, this has got to snap back. Well, it may not. I think some of the biggest uh, uh, losers people get are when they try to buy something because they think it's cheap. It can always get cheaper. Like, for example, I'm going to show an example, pre-market Crocs. And this is another example of the pattern that you talked about. Crocs popped from the wedge. I told everybody with this kind of a wedge, you may see a pre-market run on it. Well, it went one, two, three, four, five, and then faded. Now on the opening, it popped for one minute, exploded to 155, and it got slam dunked down to 144. Ran back up again. This one looked like a V bottom and a right-handed extension, but it had a retest. Now they had fantastic news, but you always got to consider where a stock came from whether it's breaking out or whether it's spiking up. Take a look at this chart. Yes, Crocs was trading at eight and a half in March of last year. And it went this morning. And, it, and by the way, at one point it was trading 163 back in September before the market pulled back, it took this down. Uh, today's pop is con was convincing, but right now I'd be really careful with this stock and I would stop on the 143 no matter what. Um, Rena, if there's any other questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Yeah, perfect timing. Somebody just popped in and wanted to know if you have any thoughts on the stock ticker TEAM, T-E-A-M. Adelassian? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do have a lot of thoughts. This, this was a tech trader swing trade in 2017 when it was 35. <laughs> and it went up to 420. Now, it took three years, of course. Uh, but when you see a stock that has this kind of uninterrupted long-term pattern, You've always got to be, say to yourself, well, where is the top? There is no top until a top, stock tops, meaning you can't anticipate a stock like that. Never stand in front of a runaway freight train and never short a stock just because it's expensive. But otherwise, you would have shorted Tesla at four or 500 and watch you go to 900, right? So, and Tesla may be a thousand in, in a month the way it's going after today's action. Um, what do I think of it? I think um, what I would do is continually raise my stops to stop, you have to stop. This stock, in my opinion, under 375 in that area, because then it's vulnerable all the way down to 285 again or worse. For me, I think the stock tags, my next target is 440, 45. Beyond that, if it accelerates, if the angle changes, that's always something. I find that when stocks blow off, they, they go through the channel top and blow off in, in an angle that sometimes gets too far too fast. And that's where the stock should be sold. When you see a blow off, too far too fast kind of move, comes with volume like this, we often see a pullback. So for me, uh, my targets are 140, uh, 444.5 and then about 475. Um, but I would continue to raise my stops and make sure that at each pullback, if a stock doesn't make a lower low and runs up, then you put a stop under the prior pullback. That's my take on it. That's an and, awesome and, analysis. <laughs> anything yeah. else? Yeah, yeah. I have another question. Um, they want to know, do you use options to trade various stocks? Well, I don't, but many of my traders do, and they post it in the room. Um, when, and uh, I've been told that people have made, you know, 10 times their money on options on some of my swing trades that just took off and kept running. We've had some great swings of late. I can show you a few of them. Hold on one moment. I bring up my watch list and some of my swing trades alert, swing trade alerts. Well, we've had some really good ones. APA, when an oil stock, has been one of my swings. And you know, pretty much, folks, by the way, this stock was a swing here and there. And we've this is the third swing we've had on it. And take a look at the little left shoulder head and the little platform right shoulder. And look at the volume and the breakout. So when it broke out right there, I put a swing on it at about 21. And it's recently reached 28. 
It's up 33% in about two, three weeks. My target's up in the 32, 33 range. Um, but you know, there's so many different examples of stocks that look really good. SOFI is a recent swing I put out. Take a look at the uh, rounding base pattern. If when it broke out there, we put a swing on it. The swing is currently working. It's gone from 18 and a half to 21.78, and on my targets to 24.5 and 28. Just a couple of examples of some of our swings. We had some really, really strong ones. Um, a and Y was a swing here when it broke out and exploded. Um, P A L T as well. You can see that explosive move after it broke out right there, and quickly. And current C L S K is a current swing. You can see the long downtrend, and the lateral price resistance and breakout right across there. So it's a current swing. My targets are 21 and 25. A couple more that have worked very well for us. ACY was a monster. It went very quickly too. When it broke out here, I put a swing on it at 65. It went from 39 to 65 in four days, basically. And, um, and it's pulled back. And right now I'm watching it because if this, if this is a one, two, three, four, then the fifth wave may come in. It could take this to over $100. That would be an awesome one. Uh, we opened a door with stock tickers. Do you want me to chat them to you in Zoom or just keep reading them off? Yeah, keep reading them off. That'd be good. Okay. Uh, X-E-N-E -N -E is the next one. Well, just so you know, folks, X-E-N-E -N -E is a current swing trade. Amount. Here's why. When I see a long base pattern and a breakaway gap on big news, um, and then the first pullback held, I put a swing on, on the pullback around 30. My first target was 35, it hit 34.87. My second target is 38. Um, but what a stock like this, it's key that the platform holds. Meaning when a stock pops and pulls back and pops and pulls back twice, holding 29 um, and a quarter a half area, I would stop under 29 because then you're vulnerable to 27 and three quarters or even 25 and a half or even a gap fill. So that's dangerous. But normally, the kind of stock that I see that does this usually works its way higher. So I'm looking for 38, 44, and maybe 50 at some point. I like this a lot. Awesome. Good pick from Mark. <laughs> All right. Next one is INMD or in mode. Yeah. Well, in mode, uh, INMD, right? Right. In mode, believe it or not, folks, some of you weren't here. It was an original pick of mine back here when it had a V bottom pop and formed a coil. I put a swing on it, I believe, at 12 and a half. I put it on again in the mid 20s. I put it on again at 40. The stock is spiked at some point up to 90. Uh, it's really worked well. And even recently, they formed a coil that did not break the 50 or the trend line and popped out with a breakaway pop right there just six, seven days ago. And now it's consolidating. It did make a new high yesterday, all time at 91 by a dollar. But still, this needs to get over 90.91 to run. If it does, you may see 110.20 up in that zone. Uh, the short-term support is 80, 80 and a half. And I would love it not to go under 77 and a half. I'd probably stop it right there. That's my take on this one. And if you look at the long-term channel top, draw your line across there, the projection would have to be upwards of 99 to 100. So that's my near-term target. Very cool, thanks. Uh, next one is FTNT or Fortinet. F P N T N oh, oh FTNT. Yep. Yeah, I know this company very well. A security software company, I believe. And take a look at this. Now, when this, I was actually in Fort Fortinet in the 30s back in 2017. It's now 330, 11-fold increase. More importantly, back in uh, back last year. When market bottom and then it, this v, the, went into a you know one two three waves run up, the multiple waves down here were reversed when the stock moved back up here. And since then, it's been a huge move, very similar to PAMW, I believe, uh, the other software giant uh, in the security software field. The way I gauge trends is by this. You're asking me where the tar target is? Four hundred dollars. And where, where would I put a stop in case the market fell apart? Uh, you've got to be out on the 285. 284.5 is my support. 
I know it's a long way from here. So another thing you can do is take a look at where the prior highs were that it just went through and figure that as support or where the 50 is. You can always, look, here's another thing. People always either sell all at once or buy it all at once. You don't need to do that. Sell half under 310. Sell, uh, I mean, a third under 310, a third under 305, and the rest of it, you got to dump on the 285 if it does that. Because if it comes down and breaks one or two levels and then turns around, you still got skin in the game. For now, though, um, uh, it's just human psychology. Once you make a decision to sell, you want to sell it all. That's not the way successful traders that I've known make their real money and how they stay in a stock. As a matter of fact, you never buy on the way down. You never average down. You always average up. The biggest traders in the world, Jesse Livermore, back in the 20s said, buy high and sell higher because there's no overhead resistance and it's, and it's blue skies and the stock can continue to go up much further than you think it's going to go. Uh, and everybody that's in this uh, webinar right now I can, has a story about a stock they sold too soon. Any other questions? Yeah, by the way, that's such good advice. <laughs> All right, this is a really good one. Frank wants to know, can you show us some stocks that like didn't work? Didn't work out for you? He went, of course, every day. You want to know stocks that didn't work for me? Are you talking about intraday today? You said, what, what about the stocks that don't work? Well, the stocks that don't work are stopped. Uh, I'll give you a couple examples. By the way, the DWAC just, just hit 29. And a half. Incredible. This might be a blow off into the 30s and 40s. The stock that didn't work, I told you earlier, SIOX did work. But at this point, you can see the angle's been broken. Uh, although lateral price support at, in the VWAP, volume weighted average price is still supported 50 at two and a half. Here's one perfect example. This morning I said, if it breaks out here, it's a, it's a trade. It popped and pulled back and started to run. And that was a trade at 22. Um, it went up to 25 if you were lucky enough to take the three points. But then I said, raise your stops to under 22.90. You would have been stopped right there. If, if, if for those who didn't, I also said under 21, 21 and a quarter is a must. Well, they got slammed when that was taken out. Look at this bar and look at the volume. The volume was almost a million shares on the downside breaking through support. And look what happened after that. Now, yeah, this is a trade that if you didn't sell it up there, um, at least you were protected with a stop on the downside. I don't think that worked great. It, you know, here, let me look at one that didn't work. Uh, NXTP was a chart that looked like it was breaking out right here. It bounced, it came down and bounced, and I told everyone to stop it at 290. So this one didn't work. And under 290, you're stopped for a small loss. But look at where it is now, 262. And you're sitting there, death by a thousand cuts every time it takes down. It's killing you uh, in the inside. It, uh, every day I have stocks that work and don't work. Here's one that popped out. We put a, a day trade on it when it went here and then formed a wedge and broke out. Right there was a the trade. 1170. All it got to is 1246, but still 70 cents. And then it rolled over. But my stop was right there, 1150. So you were stopped out in this range. And it's now 1097. And that, those are just three or four examples or two or three examples of stocks that we had even today that didn't work. XM is another. It's, I, I told everybody I really wanted to be, and this is one where it was a what if trade. I often will put out a what if trade, meaning what if it goes over a certain level, that's where we buy it. And too many people anticipate and get hurt. It's formed a beautiful wedge. It looked like it was gonna explode and it rolled over. There's, there was my stop right there. So those are three, some examples of stocks that don't work. But the key is, you can have four or five small losses in a row or, or more. All you need is one good trade like, like DWAC and more than make up for everything. And that's at protecttrader.com. That's what we try to accomplish. Protect your positions with accurate stops. But all day I'm online, I keep, and by the way, 10 minutes after the market opens, I come back on to show the early action. I usually stay on 30, 40, 50 minutes. Then I come back mid-morning, midday, mid-afternoon, and at the end of the day, within an hour before the close, a final update. And I'm constantly showing, while th this webinar is up all day, my charts are up all day. You can see my charts and you see me drawing lines and drawing my support levels and moving things around because that's what you should be doing if you're a technical analyst uh, trying to adjust each time. Look at the triple top now in this stock. If this gets to 29 and a half, it most surely is gonna explode. 
On the other hand, my stop right now is 26, period, end of subject. The pullback low, 26.12. The 50 period moving average is 25.87. Under 25.90, 26, you wanna, do not wanna be in a stock because it's vulnerable quickly to 22 and a half. On the other hand, like it consolidated here and there, and again, in there forming a wedge, this stock doesn't look done to me, does it? At least it's not showing me that yet. I will say this though, these two bars here and here, two reversal bars within seven or eight bars on heavy volume would indicate the possibility that this could collapse if it breaks down. But by now you should be at a two thirds of your stock and riding with house money, okay? And if it goes, it goes, and you can make some more money, but you still got some skin in the game. Are there any other questions, Rina? Um, there was a couple other stock picks that came through, but we are kind of out of time. Um, I did put your website in the chat, and then you're going to be in Las Vegas too, right? Doing this, you know, in person. I am indeed. Yeah. So it's February 24th, 26th. We're going to have Harry Boxer live. Uh, you can ask him your questions, you know, right then and there. Um, but this has been so cool, so fun. Well, um, if you go to thetechtrader.com, you'll see my website. It's there basically. And it's being, by the way, we're in a major um, uh, programming website change. So things are gonna look different in about four or five weeks. But for now, you can see all we offer. Day, trade, sw day and swing trade alerts during a session, live webcast chart analysis, minute by minute analysis, all kinds of news that I post. Um, and you can, you can chat with all the members. You can ask me questions directly. There's a trackable trading list. There's nightly videos. Every night I do a charts of the day video and every weekend I do a lengthy hour long um, weekend webinar. And that's what I offer everybody at a very reasonable price. So thanks for being here, everybody. And I look forward to seeing some of you in the room. Again, it's thetechtrader.com up here. Thank you, everybody. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Harry, for joining us. Great presentation. It was really My cool pleasure. to see your moment by moment approach. Bye -bye. <laughs> see you next time.